computer. Hear that? Recording in process. Yeah, yeah, for progress. Okay, we should be ready to go now. And hopefully everybody will be able to uh, uh, join uh, you. And uh, what I'm going to do is probably let you uh, start uh, doing your little thing and talking about stuff. And let's just hope that people start calling you. Well, I think hopefully some folks will. Um, like it or not, we're ready to go. So, yeah. uh, well, I'm just a good show gonna, with I'm you tonight. Gonna... So we can uh, get started. Go ahead, call us up on GabNet if you want. Talk about anything. There are, are a few things to go in the news tonight. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. Um, we did talk a little bit on uh, Alex's show about the uh, DOJ is going to push their appeal in the special master issue at the Mar-a-Lago case. So that's going to develop. Um, you know, I shared that I don't really know, you know, where that's going to go, but I, I have sort of a, a, a leaning feeling that um, when you get that issue in front of, of, of a couple of judges, that I think you might, you know, maybe see a reversal in that because you, you might get into some separation of powers and, and things like that. And, you know, look, I, I know that right now um, a lot of folks are skeptical of the judicial system and, and things like that because of, you know, a lot of the politics that's that's been surrounding the, the Supreme Court and some decisions and, and, and some folks are down on, you know, the judicial branch and judges and things like that. But I guess I would I would say that, you know, the the judiciary is very large as a whole. Um, you know, it, it's almost like the police, for example. You know, people have some issues with the police, but you have to remember that, you know, police forces across the nation by and large are, you know, made up of a lot of people, um, you know, if you isolate a couple of people here and there and put them on the news nonstop, you can easily make it look like, you know, every police officer in America gets up in the morning and just can't wait to, you know, beat the hell out of a black person or something like that. So I, I, I would sort of defend the judiciary, you know, in a way like that. Just remember, it's very large, you know, for the most part. Um, you know, I think a lot of these people are really interested in, you know, doing their job, following the law. Those kind of things. So we'll see where the Mar-a-Lago case goes. Um, I think that the uh, revelation today that you know uh, these uh, all those boxes that you saw us take out, there was no classified documents in those. They were just full of you know newspaper clippings, just just newspaper clippings. Um, I read things like that anymore. Uh, Trump makes me laugh. I mean, he is so ridiculous sometimes, and his people are so stupid sometimes that I cannot even help but just laugh. Because, I mean, who who the hell cares, first of all? And second, I mean, who keeps, you know, hmm. 12 boxes of their own press clippings or whatever? I mean, it's, it's, it's like, I mean you know, sitting around and what, reading your old glory days, press clippings or whatever, uh, from, from when, when you had your 32% approval rating or something like that? I mean, you know, so that stuff makes absolutely no sense to me. It is no wonder that the National Archives read that and rolled their eyes and said, oh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm sure that's what was in those boxes that they carted around was was, you know, his newspaper clippings. Uh, give us a break. Uh, you owe us our documents. And then they pushed this for the last, you know, I don't know, 12 to 16, 18 months or whatever. And it, it got to a crisis point. He is in trouble of his own making. And there is nothing that he can do about it. He knows it. A lot of other people know it. And I don't care what Lindsey Graham says or what Ted Cruz says or anybody else. Guy broke the law. It's pretty clear that he broke the law. And, you know, he's going to have to deal with that. I don't know if that means, you know, anything serious is going to put a smile on your face is going to happen. But that's a separate conversation. But I mean, it, they're going down the path and there's nothing that there's nothing that he can do about it, including run for president. I mean, so um, he's, he's not going to be able to, to get away from the consequences of his actions again. Those consequences might not go all the way like some of us would like to see, 
but he is going to have to, you know, to deal with this. It's going to be a headache that he's going to have to put up with. I think behind the scenes, some of his people and some, you know, some people actually love it because they think they can make this big deal about it. They can raise all this money and all that. But there have got to be people within the Republican Party who are getting to the point where they are starting to realize slowly that this is a. Uh, this is an anchor tied to their neck and it's it's getting harder and harder to drag it around. So maybe they're uh, maybe they're going to wake up finally. I don't know. So we have just got Alan with us right now. If anybody else wants to call up, go ahead. Uh, Patrick is unavailable tonight. Kevin is running late. So, you know, what kind of world do we live in when your own friends abandon you? Right. I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I don't see um, Alex on the show. I just see me and you uh yeah yeah so we'll, we'll get we'll get a we'll get a couple more folks on here but uh i'm sure we will a couple other couple other things uh i don't think alex is muted but i think i can mute him there um yeah i got it um i'll unmute him here in a second he'll hear me uh a couple other things we could talk about um i don't know anybody that's interested can call up and let me know what they want to talk about i'm more willing to take on anything you know anything that anybody wants um couple other things that I uh, went over in the news uh, that might be worth um, talking about would be a few things. So, look, I think Russia is on the run on, on the run in Ukraine. That's an interesting story to me. Um, I like Ukrainian uh, aggressiveness. Um, I can tell you that, uh, you know, as as a military historian, for example, I am always intrigued by uh, military strategy. And, you know, sometimes military strategy dictates that even when you are outgunned or even when you are uh, outmanned, even when you are at a disadvantage, you charge anyway, right? Okay, you take the offensive anyway. It's uh, Nathan Bedford's Forrest famous line, you know, charge them both ways, you know. <laughs> or whatever, you know, that, that you take the initiative and the aggressiveness and you see if you can't turn that into your favor. And that's what the Ukrainians have managed to do. So, you know, as a military historian, I think that's pretty neat. Um, I think that there are some folks, military strategists, uh, who are watching that pretty closely right now. And they are trying to learn what they do and how they are fighting that war because warfare evolves, obviously, over time. Um, and we are seeing that. You know, I heard a little bit about how the, you know, uh, the military in uh, Taiwan has been studying some of their methods uh, to try to learn what they could use if they were ever invaded by the Chinese, for example. So, you know, that, that's pretty neat stuff. If anyone's got an opinion on that, um, I'll just run down a couple stories and we can pick a few. I did read earlier, and I think this is a really interesting one, um, that the... The Texas social media law that was passed a few months ago that basically limits what tech companies can do to you um, as far as like banning you or censoring you, et cetera. You know, that law passed. It was appealed. Well, it's 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 been upheld and allowed to stand right now by a circuit court of appeals. So that law basically, my understanding was, is now in effect uh, in Texas and is going to stay in effect. And it sort of sets up a showdown where it could possibly go to the Supreme Court. So that would definitely be it would definitely be interesting because I think the court would take that one. I'm not quite sure yet where it would go. But how big tech companies and social media companies can enforce their rules or uh, you know censor you or ban you and things like that, I think in our in our time that's do you guys agree that that's probably a pretty big issue right i mean that's that's probably one of the larger issues that's going to loom over our our lives in the next you know coming five to ten years right yeah, yeah that, that that law is going to be pretty 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 crucial because you know i'm sure that you'll see other states go in that direction you'll see a push for the federal government to go in that direction but, you know, that really concerns me in some ways. I mean, even though there's always two sides to the issue, but, you know, 
I have some problem with the fact that a, a, a social media company is is obviously is private. Um, can't set some rules that you have to follow and then be allowed to enforce those rules. I think that I'm I'm quite certain that you'll you'll see some hypocrisy from this. Like for example, I'm I'm pretty sure that if tomorrow Barack Obama were to start get his own account on Truth Social and he were to be putting Donald Trump on blast every day, Donald Trump would be wanting to ban him from it, saying, I own it. It's my social media company. He has no right to come on there and uh, and, and blast me every day, right? Would, would Trump not? But this, this law in Texas says Trump can't do that. So I think that, I think that you'll see hypocrisy coming. I mean, I, I think that everyone's going to Think that it's great until it doesn't work in their uh, work in their favor anymore, and then I think all of a sudden Republicans will do what they always do, which is turn around and say the exact opposite of what they were saying six months ago, and then get on this big PR campaign to try to convince you that's not what they were doing. So I think that that'll be coming. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you guys tell me what you think. I mean, do you think tech companies should not have any right to ban or or censor people that? You know, or, or do you think you should just be able to just literally just post whatever you want? Well, they're a private company. They should be able to do whatever the hell they want to do. Uh, uh, I mean, I kind of see it that way. And but, I, I, I also right? think that we, got, we have such a different situation now. I mean, freedom of speech is extremely important. But the problem we have now that we haven't figured out how to deal with is social media can yeah. become a situation like yelling fire in a crowded theater yep. which you can't which you couldn't do right and now and now social media has a similar effect on the entire world so what do we do about that and no one's been able to figure that out yet yeah i mean that's uh i mean you're right and we'll ask alan what he thinks but you know that's that's what i i kind of lean toward what you said which is you know that a facebook or whatever is a private company and that when I go to Facebook and I make an account, um, they 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 put a document on the screen in front of me and they say, read this and say that I agree to it. I probably don't read it, right? Probably no one does, but that's what you're supposed to do and you're supposed yeah. to agree to it. And it probably says somewhere in there that they have the right to do this, that, this, that, and this and that based on if you do this, that, this, and that, this, and that. Yeah. And then now some people don't like that because... It didn't work in their 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 Jesus Trump's favor, right? Because it, it worked against him. So now all of a sudden we need laws for that. So why why do conservatives suddenly favor laws that don't allow private companies to do what they want? I mean, that that's not a conservative because point of they're, view. They're well, they're hypocrites. I mean, what, what happened to the whole Christian stance that they had during Reagan and Bush? Now now they're like the most incredibly non-christian group of people i've ever seen I, and then and then saying it, they're just it's complete hypocrisy constantly and it's it's never it never it just i'm constantly amazed and I, I i wish i could understand it uh i guess it's a very complex psychological and sociological uh phenomena that's that we're watching uh it's it's complicated i don't get it well i, mean, I really Oftentimes, I do not either. Um, I would agree with you that it is uh, incredibly hypocritical and disingenuous at times. And, and look, if someone doesn't like that or whatever, again, right here on GabNet, you're more than welcome to call up and argue that point with me or say what you think. Uh, but I'm comfortable with what I say because if I walk by and spot some hypocrisy on the left tomorrow night or whatever i'll put it on blast right here now I, 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 i'm fine with that i don't have any problem with that it's not about am i a registered democrat or a registered republican i'm not out here tonight to score big points for the party and get a victory no i'm just telling you what i see I'm just telling you what i think i'm telling you what i am observing and i'm observing you know the conservative party of america in texas all of a sudden against corporate companies telling you what you know their rules are for when you do some business with them um and i get this can be a little complicated because you get some civil rights issues and 
and stuff like that. But I'm just saying, I, I, I suppose I've never understood why, according to them, it is okay for you not to sell me a cake because I'm gay, but it is okay for you to have these laws that say, well, you can't, you can't kick us out. We should be able to do whatever we want. You have to serve all of us. I mean, I, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense to me sometimes. They, they, they're asking for, for laws to be made that only work in their favor. And that is not the American way. It is just, it's just not. I mean, look, sometimes the law works in your favor. Sometimes the law doesn't work in your favor. But why don't you why don't you work within our political system and have some respect for it? You know, I mean, well, yeah, that's what ahead. concerns. That's what concerns me, because. Um, I, I don't want to be hyperbolic or, or catastrophize, but this this is how fascism begins. And um, that's how it began in Germany. You know, people just started acting this way and uh, and it's stuck and it's happening here. And I don't know how it's going to end. I don't I, I don't think it's well, going to end like it did in Germany. I, I don't think I really don't think so. I don't think so. Well, I don't but think it, so either because but it's causing a problem. It's causing a big problem. It's really challenging our 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 system. Yeah, I, I think that in this country, you know, right now, especially you have a lot of people, though, that are pushing back. You know, I mean, the amount that push back, for example, in in the in the in the rise of fascism in Germany was was much lower, right? Um, because the entire country was angry they and were. was uh, had had been done a disservice in a lot of ways at the end they of the war. You the know, martial law and the martial, yeah. you know, yeah, and they they were able to, uh, you know harness that hatred and that bitterness and all that we have a lot of people and media apparatus and you know a lot of people still in our government etc who push back on this garbage so I, i'm not i'm not necessarily you know living in fear of something like that happening here but there is nothing wrong with being observant of that and understanding that if you stop being vigilant about it and you just ah, it never happened here that that can open the door for you know for problems exactly so it's always a good idea to continue to have that conversation and, and remind people that you can't just ignore you know hypocrisy and you know hate speech and and, and things like that i mean listen I, you know you talked we talked about it actually I would not deny that there is probably, well, not probably, that there is some issue with immigration here, with security at the border and all that. And that's that's fine. But I'm here to tell you now that Republicans are in no way, and maybe Democrats aren't either, and that's fine. Again, I'm just here to tell you what I observe. Republicans are in no way interested in fixing that problem because they want the issue. Right. They want 50 gazillion immigrants to keep storming over. They want it. I'm telling you, they want it. Yep, they do. They want to yell about it every day. They want to raise money about it every day. They do want to put immigrants on a plane every day and send them to wherever they think is the liberal hotbed so that CNN will decry it and MSNBC will cry about it and everyone will go crazy and... Fox will clap and say how great that is, you know, and we're owning the libs. And I'm, that's what they want. They're not really interested in saying, holy cow, there is a problem at the border. We need to figure out how to fix it. And we need to take those steps. And then we need to see, you know, do we have a labor crisis? Can we use some of these folks? You know, um, can we can we can we fix the problem and make something useful out of it? They're not interested in that. I mean. Do you think they're interested in that? I mean, Alan, what I mean, do you think they are? No. Or, or do you think that they that they really that they really wish there was a caravan, right? There's that this caravan. I mean, it's made up, but they wish there was. They wish there was a caravan. I mean, I you know they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they're doing that with every issue. They do that with every issue. They uh we have the same issue with the gun problem. We have the same issue with abortion. Instead of like, we have the same thing with COVID, masks, 
climate change. Instead of looking at these things from a logical standpoint, how can we work together to come up with a solution that makes you know a good deal of people happy and, and also addresses the issue? No way. No way. They don't want to do that. They want, it to, they want all these things to remain in crisis mode so that they have something to yell and scream about and to blame the Democrats for. Yeah. That's all yeah, they want. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, yeah, I can't really disagree with that because that's, that's kind of how I feel or that's sort of what I think about, you know, the modern Republican Party. Um, and as I've said before, I really shouldn't have to defend it as much as I do, but I try to make clear that anyone can call up here and that we will, we will take whatever. But I obviously have had and still do sometimes problems or disagreements with the, with the Democratic Party that, you know, I would consider myself sort of a member of, you know. I mean, that's what I'm registered as, et cetera. But that's not, you know, what we're talking about. If you've got some issue with them, call us up and we'll talk about it. If I agree with you, I'll, I'll say, yeah, you're right. You know, they're stupid on that or whatever. So I get, you know, what people are saying. I mean, you know, these these made up crises and these these stunts and all that. It's not I've said before, it's not productive. It's not fixing the problem, but that's exactly what they want. They don't want to fix the problem. Well, every now, political party in this country is going to have problems because of special interests. And of course, the Democrats do, too. And I'll be the first like you to to criticize them. And I can't stand any of that. But right now, I mean, it, to me, it just looks like the, the balance of insanity has just really gone to the, the, the Republican side. I, uh, yeah, I mean, they it, certainly it are really dominating, seems... you know, uh, the, the stupid meter right now. I mean, there's, you know. I, when Mike Pillow guy yeah. is, is like, when the Pillow guy has such a voice and an influence. It's, yeah. it's, and the guy, he's nuts. Well, yeah, I mean, listen. And, and he has a, right. I mean, when millions of people, uh, that's just one little example, but, you know, it's true. There are millions of people who take Mike Pillow seriously. Right. Yeah, that's I sad. Get it. I mean, you know, so, you know, that's a good conversation to be had on that. I mean, I, I don't, I, I just, that's why I don't respect certain members of the Republican Party right now. Yes, there are certain members of the Democrat Party I don't respect either. But, you know, we're we're having a conversation about the current Republican Party and, and its issues. And there are just members of that that I cannot respect. I, I just... I will never, I mean, that doesn't mean I wish physical violence against them or I I, I wish, you know, ill harm to them or, or something, but, but I'm just saying I don't respect them as a as a as a politician and, and really as a person. You know, Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, Ron DeSantis, uh, you know, Marco Rubio. I, I don't I don't I don't have respect for those people. Like I said, that doesn't mean if they were at dinner, I would harass them or if I were in at an event when they spoke along with a few other people, I would throw something or when they walked by, I would flip them off. I mean, I would I can be a respectful person and still say, I don't respect you because you don't have integrity and you're not an honest person. I mean, that right. I mean, that's there's ways to do that without, you know, uh, being violent or, or something like that. And that's that's where I stand with folks like that. I mean, I, I can't. I can't accept some of the things that they say or do. I mean, and I know you had your hand, Ray, and I'll get right to you. No, it's okay. No, it's just scratching. I, I mean, I, I had a little. <laughs> I mean, I had a little note here that I made about uh, you know this dust up. Apparently, I think it was today in a, in a hearing between this Clay Higgins of Louisiana in a hearing about fossil fuels and climate change and stuff like that where he's, you know, they're asking for witness testimony from uh, a, 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 a woman who works for a environmental, you know, group. And, and, and he's referring to her as boo and calling her young lady. And I mean, where's, there are ways to debate our laws and have respect. It's so what, what is the point of that? That is, that is, it's disrespectful, you know, and it's a stunt. And then, you know, uh, apparently, and I'm a little late to the story, but, you know, that apparently Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez breaks in and she apologizes on behalf of, I don't know, probably the the committee or the government or whatever. And I mean, and, and, I mean, 
you know, and then she's criticized for doing that. You know, I mean, what is this? I mean, this is. Well, I'm glad she apologized. I watched her apologize. Correct. She was just she was apologizing on behalf of the government, like because nobody right. else was going to do it. And she felt like somebody had to. I felt like she was right. being honest. Uh, yeah, it was it was awful. It was awful. Right. And then I saw another thing today, Marjorie Taylor Greene, like some reporter was got in front of her and she was like kicking the the feet of the reporter. Well, I didn't see that, but yeah, I, I'm like, you know, who knows? I mean, yeah, I mean, it was it's ridiculous. But, was, you know, it's I, I don't understand why we cannot, you know, have debate or or I mean, why can't we just make laws? I mean, you know, I mean, I propose that we do this. OK, Um now let's talk about why I want to do this and why you don't want to do this. And what, I mean, just make laws. I mean, just make well, fucking laws and then go back to your people and tell them what you did and what you voted for and what you didn't vote for and what you think, and then ask them to vote for you based on that. Well, I think what happened was is that um, there was there was a loss of uh, our jobs in the Midwest, you know, industrial jobs. People had this latent sort of repressed anger. Then Obama became president and we're sort of a prejudiced xenophobic society that got increased and unspoken. And then this man Trump came along and made it OK for all of these people to to let that dark side fly. And uh, and that's where we are. That's what it seems like to me. So, I mean, that's, 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 we're, we're close to it, at least. I mean, there's a lot of truth there, you know, I mean, you, you know, Kevin decided to call us, so that's good. I mean, you know, <laughs> he, he said he wasn't going to call because, you know, he loves Trump and he says, I talk about Trump too much. And I mean, you know, he's just, he's a Trump guy, but there's nothing we can do about it. Maybe every time <laughs> I do a show. So maybe every time I do a show too, I thought I need to start maybe like a 30 second segment where I tell you something that's in the news that is bothering me that I don't care about. And I so I'll, I'll just tonight's will be this. I understood to the news media. I understand that the dead queen of England owned dogs, these corgis. OK, I don't fucking care. I'm tired of hearing about the dogs. Well, if you go to England, you'll know why. Right. I, I mean, because because they they love their royalty. It's a cute and, little dog. Okay. Yeah, and it's been the dog it's of royalty fine. for hundreds of years. Right. And if you own a corgi, you're allowed to bring it into restaurants, and people love you. It's it's like Excellent. their movie star. It's like it's like our Hollywood. My neighbor yes. had I mean, two which, of them, and they barked like a motherfucker. Well, I mean, you know, it's like I said, it's a nice little dog. Uh, okay. Fine. I cannot believe that there are articles in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and every other media outlet about how about these dogs. I mean, it's a it's a fucking dog. If you want one, go get one. If you don't want one, don't go get one. There you go. I mean, I, I, I get it. The Queen of England owned some dogs. She liked those dogs. Okay. Perhaps at my funeral, they will mention... Some of the pets that I owned in my life or something, I don't know. I, okay. All right, then let's talk about Trump, damn it. That's why I called. Well, go right ahead. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about dogs for? Well, <laughs> sometimes you have to talk about stuff because Trump is just not important enough for someone like me. <laughs> sometimes a dog is just a dog. <laughs> but you can talk about Trump all you want. I'm more willing to listen to anything anyone has to say about trump because he's a really good guy i mean he's probably the best president we ever had but <laughs> 45 forever they just, didn't, they just didn't treat him well i mean the congress was against him the courts were against him the people Never were against him. You know, i just i don't get it unending <laughs> witch hunts <clears throat> yep. you know i mean you know but they're still look, after if you if you think God. that he was you know, a good dude, you're more than welcome to call up and tell me why. I mean, Trump was easily the best president we've had in the last, you know, well, ever. Um, ever. Since Lincoln, at least. Right. I mean, ever. And that's arguable. I mean, maybe, maybe better than Lincoln. I mean, I agree that he was a president, uh, the likes of which we have never seen. That's it's right. true. Yeah. That's and right. many people, and most people don't know that. A lot yeah, of firsts. You know? Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, 
It's not just me saying it. Many, many people say that. Yeah. Many people. You still a do. lot of people. In a big way. A lot way. of people have said that. A lot they of people it, have said that. They say it bigly. <laughs> bigly. They do. A lot yeah. of people have said that he was the best president. I still remember had. the first day he said that. <laughs> bigly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I I I actually posted it on Facebook and I just put bigly, <laughs> and I went here we yeah. go. Is that what, what a this vocabulary? Is really He's yeah. got an amazing I, vocabulary yeah. too. I mean, I, I, you that know, word. and I tell you what, I visited Yosemite National Park. And <laughs> I had a big <laughs> time. This <laughs> was mean, pretty cool. It it was pretty cool. It had bigly trees and, uh, you know, stuff like that. It was was good. I can't believe that, you know, the government owns something like that. Uh, It's it's just, it was was something the likes of the world has never seen. Yeah. I'll hardly anybody's ever heard of it. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Do the weather with a Sharpie, too. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I have to say, though, you know, those. Oh, go, go ahead. Bigly is a word, unfortunately. It, it may be. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it is, but... of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. It's a, I looked it up. It says informal humorous. So he made it a word. Yeah, he put that damn thing in the dictionary he himself. put the word on the map. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, those are some of the, the bigger word you know, Some of the bigger stories of the day. Um, you know, I, I do find the, you know, the Russia on the run story uh, pretty good, um, only just because it makes me laugh, because I, I I think it's funny that they, you know, are kind of getting a beat down from little, little old Ukraine, uh, you know, so I'm no fan of the Russian military, as you can tell, but, uh, you know, that's... 450 people they found in a grave today, or the other day, or whatever. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. kind of nasty. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, and, and the, I hope that, that's typical. Look, the rest I hope of- they get this over with as soon as they can. I mean, you know, that it's, it's terrible. I mean, but uh, so the United States is, is going to have to continue to, to, uh, to help as much as they can. I mean, you've got some, you know, hardcore conservatives now saying we should cut off aid to, you know, Ukraine. I mean, what, so, I mean, all of a sudden they're, they're all for Russia now. I mean, <laughs> Of course. <laughs> you know, Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it, it is. I mean, you know, it's uh, we might as well put them in a room and ask them, you know, are they now or have they ever been a member of the Communist Party as far as yeah, I'm no concerned? Kidding. <laughs> maybe they, yeah. you know, maybe they have been, you know, I mean, so, you know, do you know anyone who is now or has ever been a member of the Communist Party? You know, I mean, when you went to the grocery store yesterday, do you think that you spoke to anyone who is now or has ever been a member of the Communist Party? You know that that that's you know maybe maybe that's the way we could uh, get them you know banished from government or something like that. So <laughs> I, I don't I don't understand I don't understand that either. That that bothers me. But you know what what uh, what can be done? Not much. Um, we just have to keep uh, you know keep on it. Keep talking about. I I have to say it gets me kind of exhausted lately. I I just can't. Deal, I I'm so sick of this shit. I don't even want to deal with it anymore. I'm just fatigued. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been I how mean, many I years now? <laughs> yeah, I six, can agree with six that. Six years I mean, of it. Six years of this crap. Yeah. I certainly watch, you know, you know, I I, I really don't watch any cable news ever anymore. Um, I, I will briefly listen to, to maybe get some information like, you know, because I have satellite radio that's, you know, simulcasting, you know, all the networks, you know, or whatever. Like some some morning Joe in the morning on the way to work, and then when I start the car up and get in to come home, it's still on that channel. And you know, while I'm getting my drink ready and you know rolling the windows down and all that, it it plays, and I sort of listen to what they're talking about. And normally by about the time I get out of the parking lot, I say, well, you know, that's enough of that, and I go to whatever I really do want to listen to, you know. Because that 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 news will wear you out. I mean, it's the same shit over and over and over yeah. again, regardless of the network. It it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't know how anyone really does that, but they've got people hooked. I mean, you know, I, I it just if, if we got in the car, you know, at any random, 
if we got in the car, it's it's 1240 a.m. on the on the East Coast. And if we got in the car right now and we drove over to my parents' house and we went inside, number one, they're probably asleep. And number two, the TV in the living room is probably on and playing and it's on Fox News. I mean, that Same way, here. when they get up in the morning and they go out to the living room, they don't miss that eight seconds that it would take to pick up the remote control and turn on the television. <laughs> you know? I mean, it just saves time. You know, it's it's like it's like uh, leaving the TV on, you know, because the game's going to start later or whatever, you know, and I don't want to forget and then be like three seconds behind or whatever. So some people can watch that stuff all day. And I don't know how because it just. But it ties them in knots. I mean, how can they live with that much anxiety is what I don't. I mean, because they just get used to it. I, I, I guess, you know, but, you know, it, it, my parents or people that they know or even I mean, I see it with people on the left, too. I mean, you know, yeah, whatever those issues are that they're on, it gets them all tied up in knots. And I, I, I just can't take it. It's almost like it's almost like sports, too. You know, like occasionally, you know, I, I get in certain spots, even with sports where I'm just like, you know, I don't I don't know. Is this is this worth it? You know, because I sit around and I think to myself, you know, like. So I watched that, and when it was over with, you know, number one, all I had was like heartache, disappointment, or I'm pissed off, you know. And, and sometimes I think, you know, I never sat around and watched like Vikings all day and was pissed off when I was done, you know, like wanted to break the fucking television or, you know, I mean, like, is this worth it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I didn't sit around while I was working and play, you know, reruns of the West Wing for five or six hours in a row when it was done. Think, oh, you know, this is the worst fucking thing that I've ever done, you know. I mean, so uh, <laughs> I just ask myself that sometimes. But so the people who watch the news all day, I mean, if that makes you happy, by all means, that, that's fine. But I I see see these folks and I'm like, man, I just don't know how you can absorb that much news in your life because it's almost all negative right i mean yeah i mean if you if we put it on fox now are they going to be talking about anything being good i mean they're not right i mean we we put it on msnbc right now they're not going to be talking about anything being good they're going to be talking about trump and needing to go to prison and how he endangered the nation and by the way all of which i agree with but i can't live all day long like that <laughs> it's all i'm saying you know yeah yeah, so, yeah. They, they're 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 uh the left the left causes uh propaganda by beating a dead horse um, yeah but also msnbc not cnn so much i don't think msnbc will 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 spout out falsities in in a, in a similar way that fox does on the other side mm-hmm. I, i've seen them do it um CNN seems to be pretty upfront, but they just push the same thing so long that it makes you your mind just think about that, you know, because yeah, um, right. I I have to get going, but uh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's all right. Okay, Alan left us too. Hopefully, go ahead. Okay, yeah, Alan left us too. I I don't I maybe had to go. I mean, if um, hopefully we didn't, you know, not uh, we weren't holding him up or anything. I mean, if he wants to call back, if he didn't think he was getting to talk enough or anything, hey, call us right up. You know, I just, your hand, let me know I, what just you I got COVID. I'm feeling kind of sick. I, I need oh, to let okay. go right now. Yeah. All right. All right. Take it yep. easy. Yep. You too. Thanks for all calling. Right. You bet. Yep. No problem. But you know, like I said, if if Alan needs to call back or you know anything like that, if you look, if you've got stuff to say, we'll take it. I mean, we absolutely will take it. So it's just uh, going to be Kevin and I. Looks like now for a few minutes. But uh, I think the last thing that I might you know wanted to mention was. Uh, I don't know if anybody realizes this, but tomorrow is September the 18th, which is also known as Constitution Day. So tomorrow will mark the anniversary of the signing of our Constitution uh, when it was signed at the the convention. So the convention started in May of 1787 and ran all through the summer. And our delegates, our, our 55 uh, delegates to the, to the Constitutional Convention came together and, and agreed on a, on a framework, on a document to send to the people for ratification. 
And they signed that document and sent it off on September the 18th, uh, 1787. So tomorrow marks Constitution Day. So if you have anything that you'd like to ask me about that, you're, you're more than welcome to. I will tell you that, you know, so my my first go around at, at, at graduate school was to earn a degree in American history. And uh, most most colleges or universities, you know, that you attend for certain subjects, history being one of them, allow you for some specialization, if you will, uh, some, you know, uh, an area of that. So in other words, you're getting a, a degree in American history, but you're encouraged to pick some sort of area that you want to become, you know, your field of research and expert in. And mine was from the beginning was constitutional history. Um, so that basically meant that you're loaded up with a lot of extra classes on American constitutional history. You are encouraged to do a couple independent research projects projects on, a, on constitutional history. And then usually at the end of your degree, when you get to the end to earn your graduate degree, you're going to you're going to do a thesis project, which is a, a very, very large project in the field of history. You're usually encouraged to do it on that field of expertise. And again, mine was indeed on the uh, subject of the, excuse me, of the Constitutional Convention of 1787. So I, I did a complete thesis project. You know, then um, we write a, a, a very, very, very long research paper, you know, well over, you know, into the hundreds of pages, um, you know, footnoted, sourced, uh, reviewed by a committee all that kind of stuff. So I spent a good portion of my life, uh, especially there for a while consecutively, um, sort of living day to day with with the convention. And, and, you know, so that's kind of what I've said before is I'm not necessarily an expert on um, constitutional law because constitutional law has developed over, you know, a really long period of time. But I feel like I do have a really good bit of expertise on on the convention on the writing of the original constitution and then on the ratification process including the uh first 10 amendments and the bill of rights that got looped into that so you know a lot of what's happened since then i've obviously i keep up with and it, it is still part of american history but that original document that left september the 18th 1787 i spent a long time um living with uh you know, 18th or 17th 17th isn't it uh, oh, yeah 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 i'm yeah, sorry yeah. What, okay yeah i okay. had uh, you're off my, my <laughs> notepad over you're, here is got a 90 the, what's you're that in the 17th already then right <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Well, so, yeah today yeah we are but uh, my notepad over here that i had uh some stuff written on at the top I've got a note for myself on 918 and I keep looking at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I keep, I keep saying this. So probably the second or third time I've done it. So now you I sound were, like you were, you were there an hour ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you know, no, I just got done telling everybody how, you know, how much I knew about it. And then I said the wrong date like three times. In a yeah, yeah. So I'm going to try to grow oh, okay. that later. But well, it's interesting because I'll bet you, uh, I'll bet you 85%. That's probably <laughs> being nice. All these we the people <laughs> out there running yeah. around with t-shirts and everything else wouldn't even know that's happening. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, you know, and, because it's it's not a you know, it's not a big day. We're not gonna, you know, it should be, especially nowadays, it should be. Yeah. You know. Right. Quite, quite yeah, you don't get the day off work or anything, you know. So no, no, I wouldn't think it would be a day off work, but it's something that should be known, especially with <laughs> With you know the way that the the atmosphere of the, of the world today and the you know the not the world but the U.S. right and, you know you would think that these people running around with their flags in the back of their pickup trucks and everything else that that you know people would be walking around going you know you know what today is right but they don't no they don't because most of them. <laughs> are only aware of the tidbits that they get, you know, from the news or whatever right. uh, of the crisis that we're in or what, you know, right. And you're right. I mean, the second amendment hat on. I correct. Know. That's yeah. the only part that they really have memorized. You know, uh, the, the seven or eight words of that's really, really important to them. Right. You know? um, 
which is, you know, sort of uh, interesting because, you know, in, in the original the original framing of the Constitution, okay, at the convention, the 55 men who went into Independence Hall and were locked in the room, they didn't really concern themselves with uh, guns, for example, okay? Right. They were just trying to set up a government. They were getting... They, were they, getting didn't get, uh, they didn't get too worried about, you know, your right to bear arms. Correct. Um, which has nothing to do with the fact that I think you should have the right or not. I mean, I'm right. not saying I'm against it. I'm just saying there are certain people who act like, you know, day one, they gaveled themselves in to talk about a constitution and somebody stood up and said, well, we're not doing anything until we settle this gun thing. Right. It, it was, they were, called framers. they were called framers for a reason. They were setting up a foundation. Right. You know, but I mean, around. that's what I'm saying. You know, day one, nobody said, you know, listen, you know, if there's no guarantee for guns in here, I'm out. Deal break. Yeah. I mean, it, we're, we're on the Second Amendment. It. We ain't going to the Third Amendment until the Second Amendment's figured out. Yeah, you know, so it, it wasn't like that. I mean, it was, it was, they were, they were really trying to get a working government put together for what was a dying young nation. Correct. Uh, it was a sick patient on the on, on the table. On. And they were trying to make sure that it survived. Um, and there were a lot of people. Who were saying you're wasting your time? It's not gonna survive. It's just you need to just let it die, and we'll figure it out, and we'll become we'll become eight or nine different small nations, and eh, so be it. Because and that could you know, be why they put in a second amendment because they saw that that could be part of the problem. Yeah, there was a lot of argument over you know do we need a standing army? Do we not? I mean, and the standing army thing has always been that goes back to you know, medieval times or whatever, right, you know, right. I mean, you know, sh should we have a standing army for the king or should he have the right to call out and raise troops, uh, you it know, full-time military, yeah, like we know it. The fact that, you know, nowadays we can have AK-47s and that sort of thing. Right. It was, a, it was, a, it was a, a yeah. protection for the government. Right. And, Probably. you know, like, like a full-time military, like you and I know now, you know, like, hey, my neighbor, he's in the he, he's in the army. I mean, that wasn't that didn't exist. Right. You know, there wasn't, you know, a couple branches and in a, in a, in an apparatus in, in the capital that ran all this and a mega budget and all that. You know, so it was a totally different setup. But, you know, but I think Constitution Day is important, um, obviously, because it's personal to me, but it is important for the public to at least think about it i mean you know i'm not saying everyone you know uh has to be so civic minded or whatever but right. that is what governs your life you know i mean your relationship to the government uh whether you like it or not is important because that is what governs your time here living in our country you know so you should at least be aware of that some but I just think that it's it's fascinating because you know there now if anyone is ever interested there there are now a couple of really good you know easy to read narrative books on the convention and stuff you know I know Patrick read one once you know that we talked about that he thought was great you know and he said he you know learned a lot of stuff that you know he didn't realize and everyone did. I mean you know I I read stuff you know and didn't realize you know so that's what I'm saying I've been through all of them but um and there are still more coming out, you know, now. I mean, people are still, that history still, you know, develops. But it, it's just important because the story in itself is, it's actually pretty, it's pretty fascinating. I mean, I'm here to tell you as a witness that the Constitutional Convention of 1787 was high drama from start to finish. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, High drama. I mean, it was hotly contested. It was debated. It was backroom deals. It was literally, I'm not making this up. It was a couple of drunken ranting speeches that went on for two or three hours while everyone rolled their eyes and said, how much drunker can this fucking guy get? How much longer do we have to <laughs> listen to this shit? It was, it was three or four hours of Alexander Hamilton praising a monarchical system 
And then everyone rolling their eyes so bad that he was so offended that after that he left and he didn't come back for six or seven weeks. I mean, it was this deal's never going to get done. We're going to we're going to quit it and, and we're finished. And then it was Washington keeping it together. And, you know, it was it was backroom deals with Madison and James Wilson and Ben Franklin and others, it was big states versus small states. And then it was Madison telling everyone, why are you worried about big state versus small state? 15 minutes after we get this document signed, I guarantee you it's gonna be slave state versus free state, yeah. which is exactly what happened. I mean, it was, it, it, was, it was high drama from one end to the other. I mean, if Hollywood could make a movie, you know, uh, they could do a really good job, but but it would be so it was but it was dry. It was serious, you know, so Holly, that's Hollywood would have trouble with that because they wouldn't really be able to dress that up, you know, but it it really was, you know, a, a long, arduous process. Um, it was written in secret because our framers said we we can't do this in the public. I can't toss out, and I mean, does this sound like today, right? I can't toss out an idea that is just an idea for us to talk about and someone hear it and go out there and tell everybody. And then all of a sudden it's, oh, Hamilton's a monarchist or yeah. so-and-so's a great, you know, I mean, it, it's, it'll, we can't have it torn. Every time we discuss an idea for five minutes and then immediately dismiss it. The story the next day in the papers won't be that we talked about it for five minutes and then immediately dismissed it. The the story in the papers the next day will be convention considers monarchy. Yeah. Right? Label. I mean, Label. That, that's Label. what it'll be. You know, it won't be convention considered monarchy and laughed. You yeah. know, it will be convention considering monarchy. Yeah. And they knew that. So they literally went into Independence Hall. They had the, the windows closed. They had the curtains drawn so that no one could hear what they said. They had the doors closed. The they roasted stick. in the heat. And, the and you know, they, they did this for months. Uh, rain or shine, um, you know, seven to ten hours a day, six days a week um, for months. And the, that period now makes up what you and I and everybody else in this country knows as the world that we live in. Um, and if you think that the world that we live in is not too bad, okay, I understand that a lot of us have problems with our country or our government, but if you think that it's not so bad that you get to live here and that you get to uh, be free and that you get to say what you want and, and write what you want, and that you get to read the newspaper that will tell you about programs that your government did that weren't so hot or sneaky stuff they did, or that you get to own your weapon and watch your football or, you know, go hunting and fishing or whatever and praise your God or, or denounce his God. If you, if you live here and you like that, those are the people that you have to thank. Yep. You know, and all the people that came after them that that went through the, the ratification and all that. And I know I've said this before, but, you know, ratification after the Constitution was written was no guaranteed thing. It almost didn't happen after that. I mean, why do you think we now have the famous Federalist Papers and Anti-Federalist Papers, right? Because there was a PR campaign that went on for this two year ratification process which took two years by the way okay two years that this document waved in the wind okay was the two sides trying to convince each other you know one side saying this is this is the best thing ever we fixed all our problems and the other side saying this will yeah. this will ruin your life yeah you'll, you'll be a slave to the government yep. you know um so does that not sound almost like today Yep. <laughs> right. It's different. You know, I mean, that almost sounds like today, right? I mean, some people trying to convince you that. Uh, sure, but it but it survived. It did, and but the main difference that I think exists it continues is to survive. That the people who made these arguments on both sides, um, then versus now, is I think then they had a genuine 
uh, belief that what they were saying was true and represented their beliefs. And I think they had a genuine uh, desire to serve yeah. and to, to work. There was and a I goal. Think now, and I think now, not everyone, of course, but I think now most of those people who are in that position are fake. Yeah. There was a goal to, to create something. And organize. Yes. I think those people then were telling you what they really thought was right. Yeah. You know, what they really thought and their opinion was right. It was the path that we should take. And yeah, now I think it's just, now I think it's just I think most of them are just fake. I don't think any of them have oh, really shit. any ideas. Yeah. I think they just say, you know, uh, this is the side that I'm on and this is what we're supposed to be for. And, you know, this memo that I got from McConnell's office says I'm supposed to say this, 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 this. And this. Right. And OK, so they want me to go on local radio in my district and say this, this that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, unfortunately. Because if I do that, I've been a good boy. And the next time I run for office, the, the, the Republicans uh, 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 Congressional Campaign Committee will be sure to funnel money into my district and make sure I'm good to go. Right. Because I was a team player. And, you know, so I think that there's an element of fakeness there. Uh, disingenuous. Yes, you know, so other than that, how are things going? Same old. Got yanked down to the high school tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah Patrick, he uh, he abandoned us. Like I said, you know, he's Tommy. he's abandoned us. We can't count on Patrick for anything. I've always said, you know, you can't you can't count on people in wheelchairs. <laughs> you know, they just turn and fucking roll away whenever they want. You know? That's right. It's just it's not uh, not right. But that's the kind of guy he is. He just always, going away down down. always going down the hill. Damn it. Is it still really hot in California? No, it cooled off finally. We're no. down to 80 degrees and we're happy. It's going to be like fucking 90 here one day next week. I mean, for fuck's sake. I mean, it's September. I mean, what's the deal? Well, hey, you know, uh, I mentioned this last night and Kevin knows about it. We're losing fog in San Francisco. The really? fog is going away. It's disappearing. Eh, it's still there. It's still there, but it's not like it was. You know, just recently, but it's still there, Alex. We're getting, we get, we get our marine layer every day. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it's still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still there. Anyway, so what happened to uh, Ray and uh, uh, Alan's internet? crashed on him and he had to go through the restarts and all that he said he wouldn't make it back in time yeah and ray uh ray had to go he, did, he couldn't stay on the fool yeah. i think he had some of the covid hitting him yeah well it's been a rather slow week you know so don't yeah, yeah. it has uh, but uh, you know, i mean uh, in most parts of the country in the fall you know people will look out you know there's Mm -hmm. football starts in high schools and colleges and you know weather cools off a little bit i think people go out to eat and you know stuff like that i mean yeah whatever not everybody's not everybody's cool like we are i, mean, I was holding off until you know <laughs> until uh josh started talking about trump so i decided yeah to i i yeah. would have thought you would have heard from patrick tonight but yeah you're right you can't trust those people in wheels can't trust people in wheelchairs. i mean you just you just can't Governor of Texas, Patrick Blazik, one and the same. <laughs> <laughs> FDR, never liked that guy. Never. 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 Yeah, never liked should, that guy. They should send a plane full of people up to Wisconsin. Then. I really don't even want to know what you think of the queen. So, you know. Uh, <laughs> the queen and her corgis? Yeah. yeah. Well, queen, okay. Corgis. Dogs, not so much. They're Andrew's corgis now. Well, they, yeah. yeah, that's true. So, yeah. Oh, well. Looks for Andrew. He'll be carrying around a bag and picking well, up. I hope you enjoyed yourself tonight anyway. Yeah. yeah. yeah we just did all right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put it up on the internet and see who's got something to say about it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll post it. Uh, I'm, I've been posting it on the main page as well, you know, the video. So, uh, 
anyway, I guess we'll just uh, we'll 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 call it quits here. Okay. All right. And uh, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Uh, it's nice to. I really like what you do. Okay. I appreciate it. I mean, it's no problem at all. You know, uh, especially while Jack is up. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's call it quits here. Let me see. How do I end this thing? Oh, here's what I do. Here we go. Bye, everybody. Good night now. Mm -hmm. See you.